hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Saints, I want you to be seated for a moment. I think when you read words like this in a song, you say, well, I don't understand. If they say this mountain can't be moved, but God, you have said that there's power in your name, so much power in your name to move the unmovable and break the unbreakable. Why is not the unmovable and the unbreakable moving and breaking? And, and, and there are people, and this is the problem with spiritually illiterate people. They come and they tell you you're not believing for it. When you believe in, there's nothing that I don't want to happen. I believe God could do it. And this is why we need to balance taking the unadulterated word of God when we're talking to people. And that's why I will never support the prosperity gospel. Because while I do believe that God calls us to financially prosper, you need to learn first that there were some that didn't. But there's reasons why some people are not prospering. They need to spend some time asking God to show them Spiritual doors that need to shut, and perhaps there's things that are being done against them. Now, I'm not here to tell you, you are not prospering because, um, let, me, let me put it this way. I don't believe everyone is going to be rich because there was poor in the Bible, okay? So I don't, I'm not one of those that everybody is called to be financially rich. I believe that there are those who are financially rich and those who are not, but we are all going to be spiritually rich and can be spiritually rich and as a matter of fact I shared with one of the brothers recently I said look at how and I pointed it to him a group of people who are so rich and so miserable it's unbelievable riches does not bring happiness but it could help further the kingdom of God as a Christian when you recognize that God will give you for his kingdom not for you. So I want to rephrase what I'm saying, not change it. I don't believe everybody is going to be financially well off, but I believe that everybody's soul is supposed to be prospering. And I believe that there will be some who will have more finances than others. God is sovereign, just as he gives gifts differently to each person. But I don't believe our joy and happiness depends on whether or not we are financially rich. I think that it depends on whether we, our soul is prospering. Our joy comes from the Lord. So if we are not prospering spiritually, we are not going to have that joy that is our strength. Now, the reason for me bringing this up is because, let me get back to the point. You know, um, I'm not here to do our exegesis on the prosperity gospel, but I think that when it's preached, what is not also said is that there could be evil altars that have been erected against you that you have to know how to deal with. There are open spiritual doors in the generational line that need to be shut. It's not simply a matter of, well, I'll pray enough that this will change. There's different ways to pray. And one of the ways to pray is to pull down altars that are erected against you. And a lot of people don't want to do this type of um, spiritual warfare, but it's what the doctors will tell you in the whole list of things if you go and you get a medical. We don't want to always go to the physiotherapist, go to the make sure we exercise, make sure that you make sure that there's only a certain amount of food you eat. Some people go to the, 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 the I wouldn't call it an extreme, but they weigh their food to make sure it's only a certain amount of it. You know, there's extra care taken to follow what the doctor says. Okay, all right. Well, there's some of us, we're prepared to do that, and some of us, we're not prepared. And depending on the results, you need to know there is a way that the medical professionals have said to proceed, and there are effects in our body if perhaps we are disobedient. I mean, there's not everything they say that I follow, but I can't blame anybody if they have said A, and I've said I just don't feel to, and then there's the effects of it. So I'm saying, spiritually, 
there are things that will occur and we are supposed to deal with the things that make us spiritually sick even if we ourselves didn't cause it because we can reap what we didn't sow just because of lack of knowledge of something that is done that we have the authority to undo and we don't undo it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's why I can't support a gospel that's preached. Do this and this is going to happen because you don't know. For example, I said this. I, I made this statement before. If you have, for example, in your ancestral line, perhaps um, a lineage coming out of where Portugal, a lot of the Portuguese came here and they bought properties and they also did a lot of drinking and gambling. So they lost a lot of the properties. Now, if you have gambling in your lineage and you are not and you are wondering why you continue to not be able to prosper it's one of the things we'll say to you let's look at was there any gambling it's the same as addictions and you say but i never drank why are my children drinking because there's addiction or alcoholism in the lineage the same thing with gambling, it affects prosperity. You are reaping what you didn't sow because of the curse that came from the gambling of everything away in the ancestral line, and here you are. So it's a very simple thing to recognize it and begin to reject it and begin to say, I am, I am choosing not to live this way, and I am asking God to grant repentance Father, for all the sins that were committed in the ancestral line, as fact, I'll confess them. I can't repent on their behalf, but I could repent because perhaps it may just be one generation away. It may not be a whole set of generations away where there's been gambling and all those things. And it comes down and it affects your finances. So I'm not here to talk about finances, but I'm here to say that's why I have no respect for the prosperity gospel because it leads people to. Just simply name it, claim it, without doing the work, without doing the repentance, without saying, God, we confess these sins. We are sorry. So there are people chuck a chuck, chuck a chuck, doing everything and saying nothing happening because just sit down and disciple them. Just disciple them, please. That's what discipling is. And why am I saying all of this today is because we just sang a song where believe for it. And if you don't know the gospel, you could take that one line and be blasphemous. Because you believe. If you don't believe, it's not going to happen. So you cannot be believing. There are people that will tell you, you can't be believing because it's not happening. No. Well, first of all, it actually, that thorn might never be removed. Because God is sovereign. So don't ever tell a person they're not believing enough. And that's why something is, the fact is, God is sovereign. All of the friends of Job told him all of that. And nothing changed. And they blamed him. And God buffed all of them. And still didn't give, them, give him a reason for what happened. Okay, so there's that. But also too, I want you to know that every now and then you've got to, and you've been taught in this church, and some of you might be new and have been taught, and you need to ask. Because you come with theology from other churches and or life, and then you are just wearing yourself down, but you've never really started dealing with generational patterns in the family line. That's just one example. So I want to tell you that evil altars is one reason why some of us could be singing the songs like move the unmovable, break the unbreakable, and nothing moving and nothing breaking. Because you've got to deal with Something else that's blocking. Are you all hearing me today? These are the things that religious Christians will not tackle. And it doesn't mean they wouldn't get to heaven, you know. It just means that the promises of God that are there and the blessings are being blocked. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love them and God hasn't made a promise to them. But they are not experiencing those blessings. So, for example... 
somewhere in my ancestral line, there was a curse done to a particular relative, and <coughs> she was never to have children by the relative that placed that curse on her. And the truth is, <coughs> sorry, I don't have COVID. The truth is that <coughs> she, um, she never had children. And then I noticed, as years went by, while she never had children, she was married, she never had children. She and the husband in years to come, many, many years later, died. Premature deaths, I think, because of their ages. So a spirit of death entered because she would always miscarry, wouldn't have the children, and then their lives. That, I know where it came from, I wouldn't say it because it's being taped, but that was a curse placed that was never revoked, rejected, renounced, and has affected them. They never had children, and there was premature death. And I saw it in many of the cousins related to those that I'm speaking of, and I saw a lot of premature death, you know, Children dying, mother dying, and that. So wherever the ancestor placed that curse, the assignment, the ones who are not saved or the ones who are not taught to reverse these things, to cancel it, to renounce it, succumb to it. Did it mean that if they were saved, they didn't go to heaven? If they were saved, they would go to heaven, but they're... Just like aborted babies, there are many there that will be in, I mean, they will, they will all be in heaven. They, they did not have a say in what happened, but they did not walk in their destiny. So nobody tell me if somebody dies is because God, um, it was his perfect will. It was his permissive will, but because his permissive will allowing babies to be aborted because God has the final say, but not his perfect will. And there are many destinies that were aborted. So there would have been, in that particular family, destinies aborted because of lack of knowledge. Are you all hearing me? So we have to stop being Christians who are blind to these things, okay? I'm saying this because it could be very discouraging to somebody like my little friend here and others who listen to this song, there's power in your name, so much power in your name, and he says his name, name Jesus, and he's getting pressure to get breakthrough. But he also and others who want to learn, because the problem is when we reach and we don't want to learn, he will be able to begin to shut some doors that is there in his ancestral line, etc., etc., because that is the way we have to go. And, and that's the way for a lot of people. Unfortunately, because sometimes people are desperate, they get help. But the ones who are, you know, you're good, you're good, you're a good Christian, but you're real stuck. You're real stuck. And the pattern is the same over and over and over. You need to get help to deal with what is the root of this thing that keeps happening over and over and over again. It's like, it's like blocking you from further progress or the point of breakthrough. Things just evaporating and nothing is happening. So I just, I just quickly wanted before we, we need to go into more worship, y'all, um, because there's chains that will break in worship and there's a whole lot that I do want to share, but I want you to know that an evil altar is a dangerous place. And a lot of people who are presently alive are suffering as a result of evil altar attacks that have not been dealt with. Please understand, you could suffer and reach heaven, but you didn't have to suffer that way. And you didn't have to leave a ha walk a halfway destiny because you're just feeling like you're caged and it could go deep. And why is it not going deep? And there are those Christians who scoff at this and I don't argue with them because it's not my business to argue with them. But if they want help, I help them to see where perhaps there are areas that they did not address in their life. And 
from the time I want to tell you, persons, blessings, and all manner of good things. Um, envy and jealousy is what people um, begin to feel towards you. Don't want you to progress. And evil altars is, is where the attack will come from because the person who or persons who are on assignment to stop you from progress, it's an evil altar that they will erect. They don't have to go and build any big stone monument, you know. Just as we have erected altars of prayer by praying, they erect evil altars by praying against you. But there are some that go further and light their candles and company. There are those when it's serious assignments like, hello, you making too much of a difference in the kingdom of light. I'm making sure I'm following this, this all-out attack. That can also happen and does happen. So I want you to know that um, they gather their information, especially from those of us that talk too much. They gather their information. You know, there are those who feel they have talked to everybody about everything in their life, pour out their heart and soul. Well, you have to be careful who you talk your business to. It's not that you are walking around distrustful, but you need to use some wisdom. Because what you don't understand is that the demons in that person are monitoring you. The person could be a nice person, but there are spirits. So you need to be mindful. And that's the reason why I would ask for prayer, but I wouldn't ask for prayer for everything in my life. I'm not putting it out there on the fellowship. doesn't mean I don't love the fellowship. I'm not putting it out there because everybody in the fellowship are all at different spiritual stages and they're all getting deliverance. And what I don't want to do is let the enemy know everything about my life because he will use from even within the, own, the, the, the church to pray against me. Yeah, some of y'all might be shocked. Please don't be because it happens. Does it mean you can't love a person? Of course you can. You just don't share everything with every single person. But you see also too, the other reason is it's my responsibility and my husband to pray for y'all. Not for you all to be constantly picking up those heavy burdens and there are several, there are many. But there will be those who God will put in your life. You know that you can turn to those people and you can speak in a general way to the rest. Look at Jesus and look at the model. Was he, was he talking to the whole crowd about everything? No, he wasn't. He had his inner circle and then he had even smaller inner circle than that. And that's a very healthy way to live. Now, why am I saying this? I want you to know that um, if you go back to Numbers um, 23, you will see where you read about Balaam talking to Balak, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. So building altars is nothing new. The saints build altars now by prayer. In the Old Testament, they literally built the altars stones, okay, or they may build it in whatever place. They go up into high places. They, 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 the people of God built altars and the agents of Satan built altars. And today, they are still building altars. So if you go to some of these places like a repo and so and other places, I don't want to single out one place. As you walk along part of the, um, the hillside, you will literally see these stones built and lit and candles and all these. Those are altars. And they're very brazen now. They're doing it anywhere now. Around the savannah, you see a little altar built and lit. And that's to carry out assignments against whoever and whatever passes along. Because they are targeting people. They are targeting families. So you'll see altars built at cross sections, like the goat head in the bucket and whatever. And what, that's an altar for that area to target that area in whatever way, come up against the families, etc., etc. You have to know these things so that now it can't touch you as you are walking 
and you are not walking in intentional sin. I can't promise if you're an intentional repetitive sin, you're not going to get hit if it's sent into an area where you are. But as you are the light and you are the salt, you ought to be able to pray to capsize. That's what I'm going to pray now. Those altars erected against you and your family. But I'm giving you examples that altars are erected all the time. They have them in even um, St. Mary's grounds. They have them. Somebody told me they saw them and that is to affect those school children when they go down there. So if you have people who are not praying a certain way for their children, they can be affected because these agents are very serious about their assignments. This is not hearsay. This is not anything that is hocus pocus. You might be in an area where your home is a lighthouse. They have erected altars against you to get you out of that area. If you are making a difference, whatever it might be, they have altars erected. So evil altars slaughter people's greatness, exchange good for evil, and monitor people with demonic monitoring agents. That's why don't be like Hezekiah and everybody that come knock, knocking. Yeah, come inside. Let me show you everything about my life. Some of you feel when you hear this kind of talk, you need to use wisdom. Gosh, you have to love people. You can love people and still have wisdom. Okay, Hezekiah paid a price. You have to beg God and repent for showing off everything. Talking everything because these people seem so nice. You need to ask God for discernment and for wisdom. So I want you to know that you can go and read in Numbers 23, even 27 to 30, the bullocks and the rams and the altars. So victims of evil altars, sometimes you might, it doesn't mean it happens this way, but you keep, um, you keep, you keep dreaming, you're moved on from somewhere, but you keep dreaming of where you moved on from over and over and over again. Because they want to take you backward. You went forward, they want to take you backward. You experience blockages at the edge of miracles. Just as they break through about, boom, there's a blockage. They don't want you to progress. Okay? Um... Always some backwardness. Always some cycle to take you back instead of taking you forward. You say, but who could have built an altar against me? You don't have to know. I could tell you, I certainly don't, but there are plenty erected against me and my family. Plan A, right? But I don't have to know because God calls me to love people, but he brings judgment. But you need to know, if there's a pattern like this all the time, among other things, because maybe you're in blatant sin and that's why you're going backward. But it could also be in the ancestral line, there have been evil altars erected and it has never been capsized. And here you are. And the assignment from way back is to carry out the assignment that was carried out with others. So it's coming down. So to deal with evil altars... We have to learn how to send divine fire of judgment to the evil altars. We have that authority. We need to stop being so lazy in the way we pray. It's not just praying about a situation. Every time there's about to be a miracle, boom, the thing capsizes. You have to get radical. It's not the Holy Spirit stopping unless it's something that is not good for you. But it can't be if all the time. It's a miracle about to take place. Okay? So, I mean, there are people that don't take those things on. But you see, there's also a lot of Christians in bondage who are not getting help because no one wants to deal with some of the issues. And this is one of them. Pray and capsize the evil altars. And there's evil altars under the waters. And there's evil altars on the high places. And we serve a God who loves us. And God has told us for lack of knowledge we perish but we are not going to perish because God is giving us he is telling us these things he is saying to us I love you however you must look at the whole 
word of God and not just little parts. So I want to pray, and I've given you a very short, they have all kinds of different kinds of altars. I'm not going into that today. I need you to know that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, Moses, Moses got very upset when the children of God erected the wrong kind of altar, right? If you go and read in number 16, you will read that a fire from God came down on some of them and burnt them up for erecting what they were not supposed to erect. So at the end of the day, there are those people of God who are misguided and have not gotten rid of the divination in them. So every time something happens, they resort to divination against people. And what you find is, if the people who are truly following the word of God don't pray to capsize those altars, God has given us the authority not only to, to plant, but he's given us the authority to, to throw down, to mash up. Altars are included. So that's one of the things that you have to remember in your walk with the Lord. That's why if you don't preach all these things and you just preach prosperity, name and claim it, you are fooling the people and frustrating them because most times they are not going to receive what they're naming and claiming. Or if they do, it's not going to last for long, particularly if there is an evil altar erected against them. So I say, God, confuse, judge, and defeat them. Those priests at the evil altars, confuse, judge, and defeat them. I don't know who they are. God, you know how who they are. Bring repentance or confuse and judge them. So I want to pray for you right now and for this meeting. And I'm praying in a way even for the ministry so that we can know that whatever altars have been erected against Life and Life Ministries, whatever e altars have been erected against the families and the people present, those altars have, are going to be capsized now in Jesus' mighty name. And the atmosphere will clear even further in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, let your anger be released upon every satanic altar that has been erected against Life and Life Ministries and those who are present here today in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, I send, I ask you to invade the altars of darkness that have been erected against anyone here, that have been erected against the ministry right now. Invade those altars for destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let red hot charcoal be poured upon the evil altars of, of destruction, God. Let the blood of Jesus descend upon those altars that have been erected, wherever they've been erected in homes, wherever they've been erected through constant word curses being spoken against anyone here and the ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Father, invade those altars. Father, right now, let your anger flow into every evil altar right now, erected against your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every evil altar to open wide for the fire of God to burn in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I release the fire of affliction to consume every evil altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the judgment fire of God burn to ashes every power operating at evil altars in the mighty name of Jesus. God, wherever the finances have been affected, Father, wherever lives have been affected, Father, wherever, oh God, children have been affected and they're turning away from you, my God, wherever evil altars have been erected against families here in Jesus' mighty name, God, pour your unbearable heat of fire into these evil altars right now in Jesus' mighty name and burn to ashes Every power of evil altars right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, send a fire of confusion to burn down every evil altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, anything representing anyone here in any evil altar, catch fire right now. Catch fire. Father, where the assignment was to make someone 
not walk in their destiny, but to answer a call to operate as an agent of Satan. Devil, you will not, you will not use the child of God right now in Jesus. I didn't call any name, eh? but the devil know who I talking to right now in Jesus mighty name. Father, wherever the father, wherever their enemies have arisen, O oh God, on these evil altars. Father, rise and blind the enemies right now in Jesus' mighty name. Let the ears of their enemies on their evil altars be shut in Jesus' mighty name. Let the evil altar priests be confused right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, send your raging fire into every evil altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the horrible tempest of fire fall upon their enemies right now in the evil altar right now. All evil altars, Father, cause a horrible tempest of fire to fall upon their enemies. Evil altars of darkness receive fire right now. Father, right now, any altars erected against me and my family and any families here in Jesus' mighty name. I capsize those altars right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, rain your fire into the rooms in the evil altars in Jesus' mighty name. Father, let the tragedy and the stealing of blessings that they have attempted to do, Father, divert their plan from the evil altars, divert this plan right now in Jesus' mighty name. Arrows of infirmity from the evil altars are roasted by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Evil marks upon your life from the evil altars are roasted by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let all sickness, sickness that comes from the evil altars against the people of God be roasted by fire. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, every counterfeit money sent into their account. Father, help us to know, oh God, when they give us money that we supposed to pray and sanctify the money, oh God. Because the witches and the warlocks bring the money and give the money. But the money is not money that you ought to just like food. You need to bless it because their aim is to sow wickedness and to sow poverty into your account. So therefore, Father, whatever money has come into any accounts from evil altars, it must catch fire right now in Jesus' mighty name. Blood of Jesus, quench every evil fire that is burning anyone here from evil altars in Jesus' mighty name. Let every satanic prayer Every satanic prayer from every evil altar must be roasted by fire right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every arrow of fruitless efforts from evil altars must catch fire in Jesus' mighty name. Satanic poison in your life from evil altars receive the fire of God right now in Jesus' mighty mighty name. Let the destroying flood of fire arise and visit every evil altar erected in your life where your footprint and your picture has been put on the high places and under the water, wherever there have been altars erected under the water right now. We capsize that altar right now. Father, wherever there is altars erected under the water for anybody represented here. Father, we send the fire of God on those altars under the water right now. And we capsize those altars right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask you right now in Jesus' mighty name, O God. Father, the power, the blood on those altars, the power, the blood. I send the blood of Jesus on all those altars right now, under the water and in the high places right now. The power, the blood, the fire of God is going through all under the water, all in the ocean, all in the ocean, all in the seas right now. The fire of God is going through right now in Jesus mighty name and Jesus I'm not stopping in Jesus mighty name father send your fire send your fire on those altars right now send your fire begin to burn them down right now in the mighty name of Jesus father all those here where there's marine altars erected against them in Jesus mighty name we capsize those altars and we ask the fire of God to burn them down 
burn down those altars today, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. God, cause the power of the blood to flow, to flow, to flow, to flow over those altars. Let the continuous burning fire of God burn at every evil altar in Jesus' name. Father, let your unquenchable, unquenchable fire of God enter into the waters for the sake of your people, O God. Enter into the waters right now. Evil altars against their lives. Receive the brimstone of fire right now. In the name of Jesus. Fire of God. Fight. Fight for your people at every evil altar. Wherever there are evil altars erected for premature burial. For burial right now. Those altars that have been erected right now. We have capsized and we cancel premature death. We send those arrows of premature death back to the pit right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your love, your love, your love, your love, your love for your people. I command and those spirits that have left, never to return, never to return in the mighty name of Jesus, never to return in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.